Welcome to the Perfection Selection of Cream of Cards TV. Do you like collecting? Then please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the like button because it does something very special. It makes you younger. In this video, I will reveal to you the most deadliest weapon in the world. A weapon that Hitler himself used. The First World War wasn't just any old war, you know. Oh no, it was a testbed for a multitude of new inventions and ideas. The aeroplane, tanks, artillery, armoured vehicles. These weapons were like biological organisms in the evolutionary fight for supremacy. And the most powerful one of them all, propaganda, the art of mass mind control. They used not only on the enemy, but on their own people too. So without further ado, let's have a gander at some proper propaganda. Here is an original trade card set of miniature recruitment posters issued in cigarette packets during World War I. Okay, let's set the scene. No other invention in living history demonstrated the dangerous but liberating power of information more than Gutenberg's printing press. The rich European aristocracies quaked in their boots as 18th century pamphleteers handed out instructions on how to overthrow their monarch masters, triggering numerous people revolutions across the West, including, of course, the American War of Independence. The ruling elites in the early 20th century started to realise that the very thing that was eroding their power could also be tamed and used to manipulate the masses, tapping into people's primitive Freudian desires and fears and sense of belonging in their communities. Hence the modern form of propaganda was born. It was used most effectively during World War I by Britain, America and their allies. Hundreds of thousands of people selflessly died for their respective countries thanks to clever propaganda techniques. Bombs, tanks, nuclear and weapons of mass destruction are nothing if you can't actually persuade people to operate them. And that's where propaganda comes in, of course. Prior to World War I, many people did not take propaganda seriously. World War I raised the status of propaganda from the realms of the mystique, charlatans and dodgy backstreet salesmen to an effective tool in advertising and gaining public support. Of course, those same enterprising salesmen would have been the first issuers of trade cards like these, sharpening their powers of persuasion on the information-starved masses. The ruthless but creative market forces combined with the significant improvements in mass communication would drive the brightest and most canny entrepreneurs into creating some of the most successful global businesses the world has ever seen, giving birth to the age of consumerism that we see all around us, and perhaps a new class of aristocracy. One failed artist, Adolf Hitler, who had been a soldier in World War I, understood the potential of propaganda and human psychology only too well. He would channel the anger and resentment felt by the German people following the Versailles Treaty and use it to propel himself into power. This goes to show how important it is to treat even the people of a defeated nation with respect and dignity following a war. If you were to dissipate and end the cycle of violence and retribution. Because Hitler could not have achieved what he did purely on his own. No way. This is a stark warning for the future. Especially now we see, we are seeing a new information revolution. Social media and the internet. Of course, we don't know what will be written on the history ebooks of tomorrow, but let's all hope we don't repeat the same mistakes from the past again. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about propaganda, then why not find out from the man who literally wrote the book, Edward Bernays, whose uncle just happened to be none other than Sigmund Freud. I'll be reviewing Bernays' book, Propaganda, shortly, so. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned.